Welcome to Your Hero Academia by Fangirl48 on AO3. Chapter 17 USJ Part 1 I should have watched the villains nervously from the shoreline. As much as the future hero wanted to jump in and rescue her teacher, the girl's own instincts screamed at her to stay as far away from them as she possibly could. This trio here was different from those the small groups had just faced. They were truly dangerous. Tomura Shigaraki The frog user was so focused she didn't feel Midoriya Sensei's sudden freeze next to her. Kugagiri The one covered in hands turned around. The villain who had teleported everyone away appearing behind them. If you're back, then Thirteen must be dead, right? Regrettably, I come bearing bad news. The Dark Miss, now identified as Kuragiri, spoke. Though I was able to incapacitate Thirteen, one of the students among these I was unable to warp away has escaped. It is only a matter of time before they return with reinforcements. The two younger hero students let out a breath of relief that they had been holding in. Shigaraki turned around further. Huh? Huh? His hands breached up as the young villain started scratching his neck furiously. Ashino and Mineta held in a gasp of horror as blood started pooling on the neck of the villain. Kugugiri. The hand covered the villain, hissed angrily. If you weren't our way out of here, I would break you apart atom by atom. The murderous intent amplified for a moment, making even the captured eraser head freeze at it. And then, just as quickly as it was there, the aura disappeared and the villain seemed to calm down again. No doubt dozens of pros will be here soon, Shigaraki sighed. We can't fight them all off right now. Our forces are too scattered across the building. It's game over. Mineta let out a muffled cry of happiness, hugging Ashiro next to him. Inadvertently, coping a feeling and distracting the green-haired girl for just a moment and breaking her concentration. It's too bad. I wanted to give Sensei the good news that we had killed All Might. But I guess we should go home before any of the heroes show up. The ashen-haired villain gave another deep sigh, kicking a lone pebble like a child who had just been denied a treat. But before that... Shigaraki then disappeared for a split second before reappearing in front of the trio, hands stretched out towards Ashido's face. It was clear that the villain planned to use his quirk on the girl, like he had erased her head's arm. Let's leave behind a little present, something to break the symbol of peace a little. In another universe, Aizawa would use the last bit of strength to summon his quirk and stop the decay user from harboring the student. Here, however, Tomura Shigaraki couldn't help but look at the brat who suddenly held his wrist tightly. There was something familiar about this hero as they looked up at Tomura with a smile on their face. Excuse me? The brat spoke up, gripping on Tomura's tightening slightly. What's your name? Name? Tomura said, trying to pull back, frowning when he was unable to get the hand to budge. Let go! That man, Izuku glanced at Kuragiri to make sure he knew where the warp gate user was, called you Tomura Shigaraki. Is that your name? Let go. See, because you can't be Tomura Shigaraki, not unless that's one hell of a coincidence, Izuku continued, pulling the villain closer so that he could whisper in his ear. See, because Tomura Shigaraki died 200 years ago. So who the fuck are you? No, Mu! Hashiro pushed Mineta away as a large villain appeared. The frog user couldn't help but wonder how a day that had started off so well had turned into a nightmare. Earlier that day, Izuku put his fingers in his ears. Yariozu, who was standing next to the young teacher, stood there with a polite smile, trying not to show how Ida's magically appearing whistle in his ear bothered her also. 
In order to proceed in our lesson quickly and efficiently, everyone should file into two lines based on class numbers. We will enter the bus and move forward to the location momentarily. It has really taken his duties as vice press seriously. Izuku glanced at the taller girl. But I think he forgot a basic rule. Yayorazu blinked, looking confused. What's that? He didn't check the bus first. The creation user blinked as she loaded onto the bus, understanding instantly what the teacher was talking about. While Aizawa-sensei sat at the front, Izuku sat with the rest of the students, the green-haired teacher trying to comfort the engine user. For future reference, Izuku smiled at the students. Aside from the buses used for long-distance travel, all the ones on campus have an open layout. That's good to know. I should have said from beside Izuku, looking at him seriously. Sensei, are you okay? You look tired. Izuku waved his hands. I was up late last night planning on some lessons for everyone. Wait. Kaminari spoke up. But when I checked in on you, you were watching anime. There was an immediately flush. It can't be both. Some of the students snickered behind their hands. Majoria sensei I always say what's on my mind, Ashiro said, her face blank. So I'm curious about your quirk. What exactly does it do? Everyone turned from their conversation to look at the teacher with unconcealed curiosity. For the most part, everyone was able to figure out what quirks their classmates had. Only their youngest teacher's quirk was a mystery to them. Uh, well, you see, Ashiro... Kamisu. What? Izuku blinked, nervously before deciding to just go along with the girl. Well, Sue, my quirk is kind of hard to explain. Really? Bakugo snorted, giving Izuku a hostile look. Yep. Izuku chirped out, not at all bothered by the attitude. You all probably think that the things that shoot out of my hands are my quirk? but those are just recent magnifications of the energy my quirk pulls out. My actual quirk is classified. A few of the students booed at that demand to know what Izuku's quirk was. Aizawa just pretended to sleep, ignoring the situation, leaving the student's last teacher to fend for himself. Now, now, Izuku waved his hands. I never said I wouldn't tell you. If anyone could figure out my quirk out well... We're here in UA, I'd gladly share with everyone. Now, the students looked interested, especially Bakugo and Todoroki, who were sure that there was more to Izuku Midoriya than he showed people. Must be one heck of a quirk, Kirishima said, looking at his hands and activating his hardening. All my quirk does is harden my body like a rock. It's not the flashiest quirk, but it also means I won't go down easy in a fight. My navel laser is strong and flashy, Ayomama spoke up. I will certainly shine as a hero. I should have pulled a comforting hand to the blonde shoulder. But it's way lame if it gives you a stomach ache, sweetie. The blonde glared at the pinkette, still holding a grudge against the acid user for the holes in its cape. Hiroshima, your quirk may seem simple at first, but it's also very versatile for hero work. Izuku spoke before giving the naval user a comforting look. And Ayomama, I bet if you let Mei take a look at your belt, she could whip you up something that helps you with that. That's if you could get a ward in edgewise, Jiro spoke, not looking up from her music player. But getting back to it, if we're talking about our quirks, you can't forget Bakugo and Todoroki. <laughs> Bakugo made a noise, while Todoroki just ignored everyone. Bakugo was always so mad, though, Ashido piped up, so I'll doubt he'll be popular as a hero. You bitch! The explosion user yelled, living up to his quirk's name. I'll be so popular, I'll be the number one hero someday, just you watch. Dude. Kaminari looked towards Bakugo. We've known you for less than a week, and everyone here can see that your personality is basically shit, floating, and garbage. Bakugo reared on the other blonde. You loser, I... Such vulgar words. 
Yariosi spoke, trying to hide her shock. Yeah, but it's kind of fun to listen to them fight. Uraka laughed. Growing up around the workers in her parents' construction company, the gravity user had heard worse, especially from her mother, who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone willing to argue with her. Settle down, everyone. Aizawa glanced over his seat, giving the students a death glare warning. We'll be there soon. All the students immediately shut their mouths. The rest of the bus ride was as silent as the grave, since none of the students wanted to risk Aizawa-sensei's wrath any further. However, as soon as they pulled up to the training facility, the students saw the letters above the door, and excited murmurs went out amongst the heroes-to-be. Welcome, everyone. Uraraka grabbed Izuku's arms, excitedly shaking the other as Thirteen walked towards the class. Oh my god, it's the Space Hero Thirteen! Izuku smiled at the gravity user's excitement, wondering if he should add some hero stickers of some of the UA staff into his ever-growing collection. Where's All Might? Azawa looked around for the other loud blonde in his life. I thought he already arrived before us. Thirteen held up three fingers, delivering a silent message to the other. Apparently his commute this morning involved some hero work. He was late because he had to stay and wait for the police to arrive so he could give a statement. He's currently checking in with Nezu in one of the lounge rooms. Seriously? Azawa rolled his eyes, glancing back at Izuku for a split second. Why is it that the youngest of our teachers is more responsible than the number one hero? Izuku bit his tongue to stop from answering. Because I'm older. Well, whatever. Azawa sighed. We can still get along with just the three of us. Speaking of the number three, I have something to say before we begin. Thirteen spoke before adding another finger to their hand. Or four. Or maybe. Thirteen. Right, right. The space hero slammered, slightly embarrassed. Coughing, the teacher looked back at the students and took a deep breath. Since I'm not sure if everyone knows me, allow me to explain my quirks quickly. I possess an ability known as Black Hole. It allows me to suck up everything in my path in a powerful vortex and turn it into dusk. Akakiri clenched her fist, mirroring Uraraka's excited pose. It's such an awesome quirk, perfect for cleaning away debris and rescuing people. Yes, Thirteen spoke, their tone changing, becoming more serious now. Though the students couldn't see the space hero's face, they knew how somber Thirteen was about what they said next. However, it's also a quirk that can easily kill a person if I'm not careful. All the students seemed to understand how serious the hero was being. While the law tries to keep everyone safe by regulating quirk use, I want each of you to know and remember that you have quirks that could easily injure someone if you aren't careful. Thirteen looked at the students. They would never know that when the space hero's quirk first activated, they had grievous injuries, a visiting family member, Black Hole wasn't so strong back then as it is now, so the person only lost a few fingers. But the incident always stayed in the back of Thirteen's mind, whenever they used their quirk in the field. Eraserhead's QAT showed everyone how strong your quirks can really be when you let them. And All Might's battle stimulation showed you how dangerous they are when used against other people. Thirteen waited a few moments, letting the words sink into the student's head, for a moment before continuing. But my lesson will take those lessons and give you a fresh perspective of your abilities. Today, we will learn how you can use your quirk to save human lives. The previous gloomy looking students now started to brighten up. Saving people was why many of them wanting to be heroes in the first place. I know that it has been said in our society that there are good and evil quirks. However, I do not believe that to be the case. Quirks are inherently neutral in my opinion, and that is the person wielding them that determines how they are seen. I hope by the end of our rescue training, you students just learn how your quirks can save people. Giving a low bow, Thirteen finished up their lecture. For now, that is all I wish to say. Thank you so much for listening to me and for your patience.
Izuku clapped with the other students when suddenly a change in the air hit him. Just like Aizawa, the younger teacher turned towards the center of the plaza, where the water fountain was located. A dark, swirling cloud suddenly appeared in front of the mountain and grew in size. As it grew larger and larger, an endless sea of people walked out from it. Everyone, Aizawa yelled, turning back to the confused students. Huddle up together now. Thirteen protect the students. Midoriya, call for help. Yes. The pair spoke together. Izuku topped on his comms, frowning, when he heard nothing but static on the other end. Looking at Kaminari, he saw the electricity user doing the same. Yet, Izuku thought, realizing that it wasn't just his radio down. His computer was also not working, which meant that he couldn't send a message out either. There was a good chance that the machine jamming or the quirk user was somewhere in the building, blocking their signal. The villains must have anticipated them calling for help. What they couldn't have prepared for, though, was one of May's many fail-safe protocols. Calms are down, Izuku told the other two teachers. But if we're lucky, what or whoever did it also blocked my signal. When she realizes what happened, May will know and inform someone. But that's only if she's not caught up in one of her babies. Whoa, Hiroshima said, looking down at the people below in confusion. I thought this was rescue training. What? Stay back. Eraser had ordered. The redhead, as he put on his yellow goggles. All the students flinched at the command, starting to look nervous. Those are real villains. Everyone stay back. Down at the center of the plaza, Kirigiri looked up at the top of the staircase as he reformed. It seems that Eraserhead and Thirteen are here, as those docile claimed but I do not see All Might anywhere. And I brought all these new friends out to play, but All Might can't even bother to show up? How rude. Humor grinned from underneath Father. Hey, Kurogiri, do you think you'll show up if we kill a few kids? I cannot say anything for sure, the warp gate user answered. However, there's the higher possibility that he will come if I warp their bodies to the main entrance. Tomura crackled. An entire class of hero brats killed by the villains. Sensei would surely love that. Well, the villains kept plotting. The hero students continued looking at the larger group of people in disbelief. The, those can't be actual, can they? Sarah looked at some of the faces below. A few familiar faces from news reports staring back at him. Of course not. Bakugo took a step forward. What kind of idiot villains walk straight into a school that trains so many top-ranked heroes? Sensei, Yarozu looked at her teachers. What about the alarms? Thirteen shook their head. They should be going off right now. So, either they have isolated us completely and have some sort of jamming device or quirk blocking us while they attacked. Choroki took a step forward also his right side itching to throw up an ice wall to prevent the villains from climbing the stairs. Or this is just a small portion of the assault, and the main battle is happening somewhere else on campus. You two get back here! Izuku reached out and grabbed the two students by the back of their shirts, pulling them away from the front of the group before looking at Eraser. I need permission here, Eraser. The underground hero frowned. We can't risk you going out of a racer, Izuku yelled, surprising everyone. Now is not the time. Our students are in danger. Trust me. Eraserhead weighed the pros and cons inside his head quickly before sighing. This attack was obviously planned. They knew our schedule and who was going to be here. I don't know what's happening on the main campus. Thirteen, you have to evacuate the students as fast as possible. Eraserhead. Kaminari. Hin and eyes turned to look at the blonde. You keep trying to contact the main campus. Midoriya. They get past Thirteen and I. You have my permission. Past? Izuku looked confused for a split second. You're not serious about fighting them alone, are you? You can only use your quirk on so many of them. Aizawa looked back at his frightened students before turning back to the villains. Then let this be a lesson for you all. A hero should always have more than one trick up their sleeves. Running towards the top of the staircase, 
a razor head jumped into the fray of villains, activating his quirk and taking out four in a blink of an eye. Izuku and the rest of the class watched in awe as their teacher knocked a four-armed giant out in one blow. Even the trio leading the assault on the USJ looked impressed at the underground hero's move. His hand-to-hand -hand skills are more impressive than the broker's information's claim they were. Kirigiri spoke, watching the hero take out two more fighters with a single kick. Furthermore, those goggles of his make it next to impossible to see whose quirk he plans on erasing next. Heroes can be such a pain. This one's good at PvP fights. Terma sighed, looking towards where the hero brats were trying to escape. Kirigiri, what do you say adding some new players to this level? Understanding what charge meant, Hirogiri gave a sight bow before whopping out of sight. Come on, Thirteen gestured to the students. We have to go. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. You can't do this to me, Fangirl48. I know I complimented you in the way you build up suspense, but seriously, stop. I'm in my toes. What are, why are you doing this to me? You can't just give me that snippet of like Izuku being like, you're not Tomura Shigaraki, so who are you, right? Giving that whole, oh shit, is he about to find out? What's about to happen? How is, you know, All For One gonna react to this? How is Izuku gonna react to this? How is Shigaraki gonna react to this? What is gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And then earlier that day, no, you can't do this to me, no. No, I, 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 I know what's gonna happen. And the thing is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's kind of like spoilerly because you know what's gonna happen. Yeah, I know what's gonna happen. But also, it wasn't like the end part of that. We saw part of it. But we want to know what happens after. And some people probably want to know what happens a little bit before. I don't. I want to know what happens after. Please, please. I wanna, I wanna skip this. Please, let me know. I, I'm in suspense. I am in my tippy toes, and I will say, Fangirl48, you are doing a really good job of suspense. In the first series, I've mentioned this. I'm mentioning this again. I'm mentioning this over and over. I am a broken record. I really love how you write suspense and how you do um, building up the storyline to the main point and main progression where it, uh, the, the, the climax, I guess, of the of the whole uh, story and plot and stuff like that. It's really good. I really love it. And it's it's just wonderful. It's amazing. I ugh, honestly fills me with joy how you do it. It's it's good. It's really good. And I really appreciate your type of writing and, and the fact that you're letting me pod fix. So as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Join our community Discord server. Link is in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.